I had a request on one of my comments in regards to explaining my uh, vacuum chuck and my vacuum pump and what I use and how I use it. And so that's what today's video is about, a vacuum pump and a vacuum chuck and how it, you use it on your lathe. Don't forget to subscribe and push the like button. It helps our channel. I have a Supernova 2 chuck with the small jaws on it. And I have a couple, I have actually three different Nova chucks, but with different size jaws on them. So I don't have to keep switching them around. But this one works with my vacuum chuck. I store this up above. This is my actual vacuum chuck, which hooks to the vacuum pump. I'm going to explain the inside of this. You can see where it actually has a bearing on the inside that is mounted. And then I have epoxy holding it, sealing it in place. This is a piece of oak on the inside, and then this is nothing more than a three inch piece of uh, PVC Schedule 40 coupler. Now the coupler, the reason why you want to use a coupler is because it's so much thicker. It gives you a little bit more width because you're going around the outside of the three inch pipe. And this foam pad I got from uh, Michael's um, craft store, and it's too thick, all right? There's two layers thick in there. And what it is, is it's self-adhesive on the back side and just put two of them together. Worked really, really well. So this slides through the headstock and that's all there is to actually putting the chalk on. You can see that out of how it is mounted on the headstock and the sticking out just a little bit out of the tail. So all I need to do is take my hose from my vacuum pump and it slips on the end here. And no, you do not have to clamp it because it's a vacuum, it's sucking, and it's actually tightening in on here. So that's all it's required to put that on there. And then as you follow up, that's where my pump is located. Now the advantage to having this where it is, is you want it close enough to your lathe so you can reach here with your left hand and reach down to your tool with your right hand. So you can move your bowl in and out when you want to adjust it or when you've got the whole thing done, you want to turn it off, you need to be able to hang on to the bowl when you turn the switch off, all right? So you want it close by. Very important when you're dealing with any kind of work on the lathe to always leave your center point mark because that mark makes it so much easier to do everything else. You're gonna come right in here and you're gonna set that right on there, all right? Lock the, heads, the tailstock and tighten it up a little bit. Now I can check this right now to see how close I am. I am just touching my fingernail to the side of this. So this is exactly where it needs to be. I have not turned on my uh, vacuum chuck. I could use it right now as a jam chuck, but the vacuum chuck just makes it a little bit stronger setup. Bring this up a little. All right, now I'm gonna turn on my vacuum. I am pulling 26 pounds or whatever they call it, but 26 is what it's registering. That's more than I need. I usually hold it around 17. Because you put too much on, you get thin back here, it'll actually suck the bottom right out of it, which I have done. When I'm using the vacuum chuck, I usually run this around 500 RPMs. So don't go any higher than that. And all we're doing is we're taking nibbles. Get the tail stack out of the way. The entire piece is now being held by the vacuum chuck. We're going to nibble that back end off. We're not going to go hard, just take a little nipple, nibbles on it. Once you've taken the, the tailstock away from your piece of work, you cannot turn off your um, vacuum pump because otherwise you've got to recenter it back up again. So we're going to keep going until we got this all sanded up, and then I'll turn it off. I'm turning at 160 RPM. complete. One hand on the bowl, the lathe is turned off, and all I got to do is turn off my vacuum pump. It is such a nice way to take care of the final end on your uh, bowl. It just works out great. This is a beautiful bowl. It turn out very nice. I got this at 400. This is a silver maple with a little bit of spalting going on in it, which really is nice. Beautiful grain. 
this is what I bought, which is the Super Frugal 2. All right, this is actually a rebuilt pump. Uh, the gentleman that I bought it from uh, uh, is retired and he is selling these still, but now he's, he's no longer repairing them and rebuilding them, he's selling brand new ones. So I do have that information. I'll give you that at the end of the video. And these are purchased through Super Frugal or Frugal Vacuum Chuck LLC is what he's called. I will give you the, the actual website for that. But all you need is to drill a hole that's that size. It slides through, gets locked into the bottom part, and there's two screws that go on it hold it in place. That is all that is holding that whole thing. All right, and this has actually got some, uh, this spins right here. So the, the actual bearing inside is spinning. This stays still and the outside spins. And that pipe sticks into the side of here. All right, and that locks it in place. Very simple system. The other system that I have and I own, which is on my um, American uh, Beauty uh, by Robust, has a, an adapter that goes just in the inside here. It just sticks into the inside. There is no tubing because it's a solid shaft all the way through. And then on this side, you screw your chuck directly onto your uh, one and a quarter by eight thread on the system. So this actually is real easy to put on. Gauge like this, I can get this gauge to go to 26. 27 is the maximum you can actually get any uh, vacuum pump to, to create a vacuum. So you're, this is a pretty good system, I gotta admit. This is a dry vein system. It does not have oil in it. This valve here allows me to adjust it. So this is the, where it's at right now. It's, this is fully closed, all right? So you're gonna get full, full value. But as you open it, you can actually change the amount of pressure that's being used and that makes it so you can adjust your bowl on your system. This is nothing more than an actual gas filter for a uh, car or any kind of motor. And the air going through is filtered out. And so you have a little bit of a filter system to keep the large particulate going inside the system. You don't want it to get into the veins. But when you open this valve up, there actually should be another uh, filter on this end which would be a great idea. These are the foam pads that I use. And I'll give you a quick little hit here. I got these from Michael's, um, any Michael's, you know, the Michael's craft stores, whatever. And this has got with adhesive backing on it. So I use two layers and I put it on the front of the fitting. Pretty nice setup. I really, really enjoy using it. It makes it makes doing bowls so much easier. I just wanted to close up with the information I promised in regards to where I purchased this set of three fittings. There's there's three of them in here. It was twenty seven dollars. This is the only piece that I think you could have to get through Frugal. It's called FrugalVacuumChuck.com. Uh, you can go online there and then just click on the accessories and this will come up, but this was $27, including shipping. So to my door, it was $27. All the fittings that I have on the pump are available from Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. There's nothing special here. The hose itself is PVC air hose, 33 eighths inch, all right? That goes directly from the pump to your chuck. Other than that, that's it. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful piece of equipment. I'm real pleased with it. Uh, the actual pump, you can buy these at Harbor Freight. I mean, the, you can get them all over the place for $50, $60 up to, oh my goodness, you can spend over $1,000 for a vacuum pump. All right, but grab a small one. Get, to find out what you got and how it's working. Almost everyone I've talked to that I've seen, the Harbor Freight one works for them. This is called a dry vein pump. Have a great day. We did have a comment come through on our YouTube channel and requesting uh, information about um, vacuum chucks and how you hook up and whatever. But one of the particular things that she had a problem with is she, was, she has an oil system. Right? I did do some research and look at, looked that up. You should be able to reroute your exhaust somewhere out off site of your pump so you can actually create a uh, some kind of a trap for the oil. So you, as long as your oil is 
up to level that it's supposed to be, not too high. If it's too high, your pistons are gonna kick it out. All right, so you need to make sure your oil level is correct. But then after that, there should be an ex exhaust or a, some kind of a muffler system on your pump. Remove the, the muffler system, extend a pipe that reaches out, pipe or hose, to a, a separate container somewhere that you actually set up your exhaust system in that container and put a furnace filter over it. Well, that, that'll do, is it? I mean, that sounds really simple, but it, it is simple. Using a filter from a uh, furnace system, just you want a very loose system. You want air to be able to move through it very quickly. So you don't want to have a real tight system because it'll get so absorbed with oil, it'll just pack in, all right? You need something that's a little bit looser, but have fun with it. I mean, try and figure out what's wrong with your pump. Go online, check your pump out, and I'll bet you you'll find a rebuild kit for it also. And I mean, if it saves 20 bucks for a rebuild kit, it's worth a shot. I mean, you can, you can figure out, always re-engineer it. I mean, take pictures of everything you do as you take your pump apart so you can get it back together. All right, just keep taking pictures as you're moving forward. And then when you put the new parts in, just replace them in the same position as the old ones, put your gaskets on and close it back up and try, give it a try. All right, enjoy.